Hey everybody, Ken Elder here, and you're watching JLove81. Hey, it's your girl JLove81. What's going on, guys? Today, Mike and I are going to talk about games that should have had sequels. All right, let's go. My first game that I would pick is Black. Black came out in 2006 for the original Xbox, and it also came out for PS2, which is a copy that I do want to get eventually. This game is so much fun. It's like a first-person shooters, action game. It's like it's before I started playing Call of Duty. Um, it was by Criterion. They're the ones that made, um, they developed the Burnout series. And it has like a lot of explosions. That's what I like about it. It's so action packed. Everything is destructible in the game. You could throw something, shoot it, it explodes. They made everything explosives. Like I, it's just so much fun. And I remember playing this over and over as a kid. Well, I was an adult already, but <laughs> I was a lot younger back then. But the reason why they didn't come out with a sequel is because I guess Criterion had differences with electronic, uh, is it electronic arts? And, um, that's pretty much what happened so they they scrapped it then they went to develop something called body count that came out i believe for the ps3 it's supposed to be similar but graphic like graphics wise and stuff it really wasn't it still wasn't as good as black so if you guys haven't picked this up captain algebra just beat the game he can vouch for me check this game out so what you're saying is ea got in conflict with the game developers correct who would I ever thought? <laughs> They're not true. known for that. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, my first game up is Sleeping Dogs, and it is an open world crime game set in Hong Kong. Now, I mean, technically, this started out as a Streets of LA, Streets of New York sequel, and then it just went into its own little, like, thing here. It was supposed to be Streets of Hong Kong. Uh, what I like about this game is, unlike a Grand Theft Auto, I feel like Grand Theft Auto gets away from the story campaign too much. This one sticks to it. I like the fact that you can, you can be a good cop, you can be a bad cop. You know, you can play by either side of the law. I like the kung fu fighting in, and I'm real big with like Japanese crime. I think it's just overall, it's one of my favorite open world games. It could be even my favorite open world game. I got it for the PS3. I got it for the PS4. And like I said, if you haven't played it, you definitely check it out if you're in an open world game. It takes place in Hong Kong. You're an undercover cop going into the triads. Check it out. Really good game. It never got a sequel. They were working on one, and then it got canceled. So I highly doubt we'll ever get a sequel. From what I read, they're not interested in coming back to it, even though it sold well and it got pretty good reviews. Again, it's 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 cover shooting. It's like you're doing missions. I think it's got about 35, 40 story missions, plus side missions, plus cop missions. Uh, campaign probably runs about 25 hours long. And like I said, in the fighting in it, is there's some really good kills. Like, you can you can pretty much impale a dude on a bunch of, like, swordfish, like, and you put people in, like, a burning, like, you, like a boiler thing. I mean, there's so many good kills in this game. It's so great. You're putting a dude's head in a fan. I love the kills. I love the gameplay. I love the fighting. It's a shame we never got a sequel. And if you never played it, the remastered version is it's, it's up to date with like on par with today's like standards of games. So definitely check this out. I'd have to pick that up because I don't have that. I've never played it. Oh, it's That's good. my like, type of game. And I know I you like, like the, Street, the Streets of LA and Streets of New York. And it's it was originally supposed to be the sequel. And it kind of reminds me of Rise to Honor. Do you remember that game? Yeah. They had kills like that. So that's definitely my type of game. So my second game that I'm going to pick is Diddy Kong's Racing. This game came out in the N64 in 1997. I was obsessed with this game. Shout out to Chris, video game Dust Leaves. I got you, Chris. But, yeah, this game was so much fun. It's like, it reminds me of um, Mario Kart, but what makes it so different is there's like an adventure mode in this one, and you're like in Timber Island, and this wizard-looking pig <laughs> comes out and pretty much challenges you to race it. So there's like uh, five different worlds that you can race in. The uh, soundtrack was amazing. The, the graphics for its time was awesome. And you not only have a cart, but you also have like a hovercraft that you could use in sand or water 
and also you fly an airplane so in the higher elevations it's just so different which is what i like about it and they never i um, i think the reason why they never came out with a sequel is because rare was bought by microsoft mm -hmm. and they just scrapped the sequel but we did get a, a, a remaster for the nintendo ds but you can play like eight different characters of course diddy kong i always use the the tiger i think it was timber the tiger that's the one that i used and like i said i really wish they would make a sequel because it was so much fun timber the tiger any timber relation the tiger. to Tony the tiger <laughs> probably <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my second game and i had trouble trying to find games because a lot of the games i like got sequels but this is this is one of my favorite ones and it's it's also by my favorite gaming company ea E A. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Shadows of the Dam. Now, if you don't know about this game, it didn't sell very well. It's made by the. It's made by three people. Suda Fifty One, or made. It had three horror people working on it. Suda Fifty One. It had the the creator of Resident Evil One, Two, the remake, and it had the guy who does the music for the Silent Hill series. They came together, and it was supposed to be like the ultimate horror team creating a game. Uh, it's a pretty good game. It's not the best game, but it is one of my favorites. It's got a, it's, it's, it's almost like a Resident Evil 4 style Devil May Cry. Like, if you know what I mean, the guy goes to hell to try to save his girlfriend, uh, has a demon for a gun that is just hilarious. And let me tell you, if you're a fan of dick jokes, this game has one every like 30 <laughs> seconds. It, I'm not even lying. Like the demon gun's name is like Johnson. So... <laughs> a, like you get a gun in the thing it's called the big boner like you know what I mean like that's your it, type of game yeah it, it had me cry it has me cracking up every time I play it there you go mega dance <laughs> uh it could have been better the original idea was a little bit better but a certain game company EA again stuck their noses where it didn't belong it made it more action instead of like horror what they were looking for the finished product is still pretty good because it had th it had three very good like had great music. It had a great director. It had a great you know producer. I forget the guy's name who did Resident Evil One. I'm gonna kick myself in the ass later because I'm a big Resident Evil fan. But they did a pretty stand up job with it. I, I wish there was a sequel. I feel like they could have did more with it. Like I said, I'm a big fan of those over the shoulder like horror games and. Like I said, give it a, give it a try. It should be really cheap right now. If you like horror games, if you like Devil May Cry mixed with Resident Evil, this is like a combination of both of them. Check it out. Guys, look at talk about Resident Evil. Look at Mike's jacket. Yeah, you like that? That's right. He's representing Leon right now. <laughs> Isn't that yeah. awesome? I like that. I did happen to offend a guy at the convenience store because he thought I was like mimicking like cops and military. He didn't realize what it was. He's like, what's with the hoodie? I'm like, oh, it's a Resident Evil 2 hoodie. He got all offensive. I'm like, oh God. I'm going to get punched <laughs> in the mouth for supporting Leon Kennedy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's a true fan right there. But I, I think that's freaking epic. I like that. Yeah. They I... even have pullover ones. I've seen these before. They have a pullover one, um, but the zipper makes it look nice. I got it off of fandomaniacs.com. There you guys so, go, Resident Evil fans. Hoodies are, the hoodies were fifty-five. The, the zip-up jackets were sixty-five. Yeah, something like that. Really? Yeah. That's cool. My final game that should have gotten a sequel is Heavy Rain on the PS3, PlayStation exclusive, by my favorite Quantic Dream. They also made Beyond Two Souls, Detroit Become Human, which this game came out in two thousand ten, and then we got a remastered. For the PS4, uh, and it also has the Quantic Dream Collection, Beyond Two Souls, and Detroit Become Human, which I think is awesome. But what makes me like Heavy Rain the best? Now, for its time, the graphics were amazing. The story, it was um pretty much your different characters trying to figure out who the Origami Killer is, right? Did I say that right? Yeah, Origami, <laughs> yeah, or killer, origami yeah. killer. And the killer uses Heavy Rainfall to drown its victims. So periods of heavy rainfall, it's so different. It actually is freaking awesome. And one of the characters, like his son, you know, spoilers, his son was killed and his other son gets kidnapped by the origami killer. So we have to figure out, you know, who it is and rescue the kid before he drowns. So it's a, just an amazing story. It's an interactive game. You make decisions, one of those games that I personally enjoy. 
and depending on your decisions you could kill off characters that alternate the ending and also alter alternate the scenes which i think is pretty neat yeah definitely i like that game a lot too yes yeah, so they need to make another one of this this is just like this a copycat killer the only thing i have to say exactly the, the control killer. suck if you're not used to it, it's really weird the way they make the character walk with the directional pad. Like you kind of use like the R2 and it, it was just a weird way to, to make the character walk. But once you get used to it, I couldn't put this down. I had to finish the story. So that's that's my final game. If they were smart with the sequel, what they would do is they would bring back the, the like the FBI agent in it and he's hunting a copycat killer. Yes! Thank and you. then maybe he gets help from the dad like that the dad in the, the thing what was the dad's name again I don't, ethan ethan if, yeah if he doesn't get killed off yeah if he doesn't get yeah, killed off. but most doesn't. of the time they'll go for the good ending so like yeah, the fbi true. agent trying to find a cat a copycat killer and he calls for the dad to assist him since he was part of like the the old game oh my god like that. that'd, that'd be, that would be awesome yeah, there genius. you go quantic dream please give us that yeah. another one of these i want 10 percent royalties yes and exactly. all I can eat sushi for two straight weeks. <laughs> <laughs> My third game is Alan Wake, and I love this game. I loved it from the moment I played it, and it's I'm a big Stephen King fan. Let me tell you, when you put this game in, it is playing a Stephen King book. It that's that's the best way I can describe it. Story is just excellent. It's like you're playing a novel, like, and it's so it just takes you and grabs you in and like you have to get to the end and uh never got a sequel for it i think it's because it came out on the 360 and to me 360 or more online players playstations where the exclusive people are at uh remedy is one of my favorite game game developers out there they did max Payne one and two they did alan wake they did quantic break they're coming out with a uh, control in a couple months like this game right here, if you like story-driven horror games, this, and it's, it's action too, it's like psychological action, this is really good. They came out with a semi-sequel, I don't know if they would, like, if they ever make two, if they would count the other one as being, like, chronological in, like, the story, but that's the most we ever got was, like, a DLC for the game. We got two DLCs and then the third one. And then they were planning on making it, but it got cancelled because Microsoft wasn't big on the idea. Can't say how much I love this game. It's my favorite Xbox game. It's my favorite Xbox 360 game. It's my favorite Xbox One game because I can play it on there. Anybody who's ever played it, I'm pretty sure they'll agree with me 100%. Yeah. Anybody who hasn't played it, go out and play it. It is so good. If you like good story games, this game right here, it's excellent. And for the time, the graphics were excellent. Like, I could pop this sucker in right now and have just as much fun now in 2019 as I did in 2010. So check that out. Look up Remedy games. They're all story driven. I love Remedy. Like I, like I said, Control comes out in a couple weeks. That's another psychological like action adventure game from them. Same people that do their voice characters are all coming back for this one. The guy who did Max Payne's voice is in it. The guy who does Alan Wake's voice is in it. Like check their games out. Remedy is really good. I got a lot of good feedback on that game. I'm surprised oh, that they don't make a sequel. I don't well, right now because. Remedy was exclusive to Microsoft, but then now they're not. They can make they're making games for Sony too. Oh I, yeah, PlayStation. As you, see, as you can see, it's Microsoft published, so I'm pretty sure there's some type of rights involved where Microsoft owns the rights to Alan Wake. Hey, you guys took Rare, so give us this. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm more of a PlayStation fan, but if something comes out for Xbox, hey, Cuphead's coming off for of Nintendo Switch, so I'm looking forward to that because I did not want to get it for Xbox One. Even though I have an Xbox One. So now that it's coming out for Switch, definitely excited. It was going through my games non-stop. And I'm like, all the games I like have like some type of sequel to them. But here's a couple. Going back to Jen's Quantic Dream. Indigo Prophecy. Oh, that... I feel like this one could definitely get a sequel. Because there's so much more to this game. It, it doesn't even matter which ending you get. There's so Absolutely. much more you could have did with this story. This is their, I think this is their first game. It might be their second, but this is their first interactive like movie type like game. The first game I played. Oh, I, I love this game. Yep. I was blown away by it. And it's the reason why I buy the, every single one of their games that comes out today. Again, we're going back to the, the you know. Yes, I love <laughs> that game. Hole. It's kind of like Rise to Honor. That's what it reminds exactly. me of. Exactly. Again, I like that like 
that like Japanese like crime style games. They're really good. Like I love the movies. I like. I, Absolutely. This was like pretty much like a high tech version of Max Payne when I got it, and I can't tell you how big of a Max Payne fan I am. And when I got this, I was like, oh man, this game, this game's shit. Like when you're on the steps and you're just sliding down, and you can just keep shooting. Um, everything like like Jen said, the like. Environments in this too, just like in black, everything was just blown apart. Very good. Should have got a sequel. They planned one. It was supposed to be the same detective, Detective Tequila, and then it was supposed to be another detective played by Vin Diesel that got canceled. So, because I think Midway closed down at that point. Never got the sequel. Kind of disappointed. Never will get a sequel. Eternal Darkness. One of the major, like, horror games that was on the GameCube at that time. Like, it was this, Resident Evil, some really good GameCube games out there, people. Still my favorite Nintendo system. Again, this one takes place across multiple, like, times. Different, like, like different, like, little horror stories that come in the one of, like, an ancient evil. Very good game. I think this is a very rare game now, so this one might be a little difficult for anyone trying to get out there and find it, so. Expensive. And I'm going to take some slack for this because I know it wasn't the best game, but I really liked it. The Order 1886. And I feel like if we got a sequel for this, the game, like the gaming developers could have learned what they did wrong with this game. And they could have gave, gave us a game that we really enjoyed. A great action adventure game with the, the werewolf mythology in it. And they could have, if, if you play, like, spoiler alert, turn it down. They could have put vampires in it because that's where they were going in the game. Vampires, werewolves, like this gen. I would have loved to have seen that. They could have did so much with it. I, But again, like I said, very good game. Had some of the best graphics at that time. A little bit much on the quick time events, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that too. Like I said, it's not perfect, but it's entertaining enough for me to, I think it should have got a sequel, and it could have did so much with the sequel, and I feel like we won't get it, so. They actually utilize a lot of quick time, uh, like um, he Heavy Rain had it, God of War had it, um, I'm trying to think of what else games have that style of I, I, I've noticed that people, like... Some games they don't care if it hasn't and some games they'll just trash the whole game just because there's like a couple events like Resident Evil 6 was just thrown in the hot water when uh it had the quick time events in it and this one too. Like it had a yeah, lot of Yeah, that's quick time, true. A lot of quick yeah. time events. Resident Evil 6 was okay. It still isn't my favorite. Um and I still would have preferred Leon's story over everybody yeah. else's. That's just my opinion. You wanna make that game good, we'll get off subject a little bit. Minus Jake's campaign, his character sucked. Throw in the, the guy chasing you, the creature. Uh, take some of Chris's boss battles. Like, I like the snake. I like the last boss at the end. Put those in Leon's campaign and yes. just have a, a longer Leon campaign. That's right. And unlocking Ada's campaign. And instead of having Helena, who no one cares about, no one will ever care about again, should have just <laughs> had Sherry or it's Claire true. come back and be his partner. You know what I mean? That would have worked. That's true. Last game, and I'm telling you, the best worst game of all time. I don't know why I like this game so much, and it is very popular. It's a cult classic. It's weird. It, it ranges from <laughs> scores of 1 out of 10 to like 9 out of 10. It makes no sense. The graphics, terrible. Gameplay, subpar. Characters and stories, amazing. I can't, I can't I don't know why it just it once it once like you'll be playing it you'll be like oh this game is a pile of dog shit and then the next thing you know you'll be like okay I want to see where this game goes it is addictive it and is. then you're 20 hours into it and you're like alright <laughs> and then next thing you know you're buying the remastered version for PS3 with the director's cut and you're like alright I like it even more now because they fixed all the stuff wrong with the Xbox one including the driving which was terrible and they added more cutscenes, so if you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you have any interest in the best worst game of all of all time, get the PS3 version. It has more cutscenes, and they fixed the driving, which was one of the biggest issues. Because for some reason, when you're driving, you're holding, the, you're constantly going like this. That's true, guys. And he, then you gotta push the joystick it, back, and, like, and it was weird. Like I was like, "What are you making me play? The music is weird. It's like more the, weird than Katamari." Yeah, Dossi. the little whistle sound. But 
I'm like, what is this? It's addictive. It is trope. It is addictive, but, but it is it really is strange. It's a real strange. Yeah, it's game. really strange. It's like Twin Peaks strange, and it pretty much takes a lot of stuff from Twin Peaks, <laughs> and that's what's good about it. <laughs> and it's an open world sur like survival horror game, which makes it like rare. Like you don't get that much. Right. And I really liked it. And like I said, it's the best worst game. And I wish it would have got a sequel because I feel like they could have did more with the main character and crazy weird stories and crazy weird towns. Get it for PS3 though. PS3. Yeah, they fixed a lot of stuff. But um, yeah. Driving. Terrible. That's pretty much it, guys. So we had a lot of fun doing this. I want to see what games you guys would like to see as sequels. I want to see maybe a response video from you guys. So let us know in the comments down below or if you want to do a response let me know that so i could be on the lookout for that and we will see you guys next time hold up i gotta say it since we've been riding e ea all night i just want to say april 13th they are showing a single player story driven star wars game i'm so excited for this ea you f this up and I'm going to come to your headquarters and I'm going to just kick every one of you right in your balls. Right in your hairy little balls. Magic and then when sucks. you're down and you're out, she's going to come and she's just going to slap the shit out of you. Jay love slap. So, so that's all I got to say. Don't ruin this Star Wars game. April 13th. I'll make a I'll make a rant video right in this room yeah. if April 13th come and this game looks I like it's gonna suck to. ass. I hope he does make a rant video. <laughs> so that's all I gotta say about that. <laughs> Alright guys, I'll see you guys next time.